Hey guys, I'm here in uh, UC Berkeley, uh, California. This is my favorite university in the world. I had the pleasure of doing some summer courses here and uh, uh, about marketing and everything. Uh, but I'm here to interview Peter Abiel. And Peter is a Belgian uh, guy, but he is a professor here in UC Berkeley as well in the field of AI and robotics. And I can tell you he's one of the top experts in the world in this field. So I'm very fortunate that we can talk to this world leader. And I want to ask him questions for my new book. I want to talk about the role of AI in customer service. Come on. So, uh, Peter, I'm working on a, a new book about uh, customers the day after tomorrow. And uh, what I would like to find out is what the impact of AI will be on customer relations in businesses. So today, you, I mean, every day you read about DeepMind that can do new stuff, Watson that's curing cancer and everything. Can you tell us a little bit what is real and what is hype at this moment? How far is AI already today? So, because the progress is so quickly right now, it's easy to get caught up in the hype because, well, yeah. things are accelerating, accelerating, accelerating. But to look at what AI can actually do, um, I think a clear capability at this point is to do supervised learning, which means you learn a pattern between inputs and outputs. Okay. Um, this could be for recognizing what's in an image, for speech recognition, for machine translation. Um, these aren't perfectly solved problems, but these are the kind of problems that a lot of progress has been made. Okay, so that means the, the really focused situations, like when it's exactly. playing poker or so go. Exactly. It tends to, be, tends to be focused on a specific domain. You get a lot of data in that domain, and then you train a deep neural net to understand that domain really, really well. Okay. Does that mean like um, Google DeepMind one in Go, and now uh, you just showed us in your keynote that they're using it to decrease the costs in their data center? Mm -hmm. What well, does that mean that Google can, can ask DeepMind, look at our total um, costs of everything and improve the cost structure? Would that be possible or is that too broad already? Something that broad to improve entire cost structure of a company is probably difficult because the question is then really how much data do you have to learn from? Okay. You need data to understand. And so for something like cooling, it's you know, you have so many data centers, you can run them all, they're all very similar. So you can expect that they'll run the same at different locations or more or less the same, and so you can probably learn something pretty general. Um, to just organize an entire company would be pretty hard. I think okay. a place where customer relations, uh, where it would come in is something like customer support. So imagine um, your customers have questions for you. Mm -hmm. They maybe send an email. You tend to send a certain answer. Right. and the machine starts learning what answer corresponds to what question. Okay. And it'll start making suggestions. It'll say, maybe you want to answer this, maybe you want to answer this. And you'll then say, oh yeah, this is pretty good. Do a small, few small edits, send it off, and save a lot of time that way. And then over time, as you get more and more data, it'll start better and better to understand the pattern of what questions get what answers. Um, in fact, there was a, a cool example this, this past year at uh, Georgia Tech, mm -hmm. where um, a professor had an online forum for their class and one of the TAs was an AI. And okay. the professor didn't even declare it to the, to the students that it was an AI, because it gave it a normal name, forget, like, you know, Tom right. or Kathy or something. And this AI TA would answer a bunch of the questions on the forum um, automatically, and the students didn't realize it was not a real TA. Uh -huh. And do you think that, um, like in, in customer service, for instance, today you have bots, and I think they're programmed for like a tree structure mm -hmm. today. Do you think that pretty soon we're going to have these fully automated bots that can actually have a full conversation? I mean, this was a professor with students, but if you think like an airline, um, how soon could they evolve towards these really you know, human-like bots? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to have a full conversation, what makes it harder to have a full conversation is that you need to keep context around. It's much easier to just, well, it's still hard, but it's an easier problem to try to build a system that can answer a question where the question is self-contained okay. than a system that needs to have a conversation where a question asked right now relates to things being said in the past, needs to the system needs to understand what you already know from the past and have a meaningful conversation that way. So that means there is some kind of state over time. Yeah. That's much harder. There are definitely a lot of companies trying to do this. I mean, you look at uh, Amazon's Echo, clearly they want this thing to have a longer term relationship with you, not just one question, one answer like you would do with a Google search. Right. Um, there are competitors to that. There's also actually a startup out of Berkeley from Professor Dan Klein here who works in natural language processing called Semantic Machines. And they're really pushing the frontier of exactly the kind of things you're talking about. 
extended conversations to book a flight to maybe organize an evening for you and so forth and to be able to maintain that dialogue. Yeah. Do you think at a certain moment if you look at yesterday Amazon launched the uh, Amazon Look, mm -hmm. uh, it's Echo with a camera now to, yes. to uh -huh. give like personalized shopping advice to, to people. Do you think at a certain moment those personal assistants like Echo or Siri will become some sort of a friend of the family and that you know, they, they will just jump into conversations and add services while we're talking? Do you think it will go that far at a certain moment? Um, I do think it'll go that far. I don't know the timeline <laughs> by when it'll go that far. But yeah, I could, I could very much see these bots to just really be participants in the conversation. Yeah. But I, I read, I think it was your, your friend at Baidu that said at a certain moment, we're at uh, like 95% in speech recognition right now, but mm -hmm. we need to get to the 99% to make it, you know, like humans uh -huh. talking to yes. each mm -hmm. other. And that seems like an incremental innovation, but that four additional percent is like the the one thing we need to make it really natural for everyone to, to talk to a machine. Do you otherwise, people, otherwise people get frustrated. If the error rate is too high, you don't want to talk, you're just going to type. Right. Um, it needs to be strictly better than typing. To, to enjoy having a conversation. Yeah. And do you think that will be fast, that speak, speech recognition goes to I that think speech control? recognition is getting there. I don't think it's yeah. that far away anymore. It might already be there. Yeah. Um, this was something he said a few years ago when he started to embark on, let's essentially, the past three years, this is Andrew and he worked at Baidu on you know, leading a huge team to get speech recognition to work really well yeah. for three years, and they made a lot of progress, and same at Google and various other places. And yeah. these systems are very good now. I always have those ethical questions. I don't know what you think about it, but like Amazon Echo is listening to what you're saying. We have the murder trial yes. now where they're like a key witness. I think that's amazing. Uh, now they got eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is, what will the ethics be? At a certain moment, imagine that there's violence in a house, like a man mm -hmm. beating up his wife. Amazon will be able to predict that that aggressive situation will occur in like five minutes from now. Mm -hmm. Will we be? Will humans want that machine to... to interfere, call uh -huh. police, or what do you think will be the ethical game in that? Because those are such a difficult questions. Well, yeah, it's the, it's the notion of thought crime, right? D did you already commit a crime because you were just thinking about it, or right. did you not yet? And if the thing can perfectly predict uh -huh. that if you have certain thoughts or behavior, you're going to do something in the future. Like, I mean, it goes back to one of the movies with Tom Cruise, forgot Minority the Minority Report, Report where yeah. they predicted it all ahead of time. That, that's pretty complicated, because that you know, really assumes that you can perfectly predict, right. which I think for you, most humans it's pretty unsettling that a machine could perfectly predict what they're going to do right. in the foreseeable future. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a good question. But it's funny to see that machines can be witnesses in murder trials. Yes. Do you think we're <laughs> going to see more of that in the future? That well, witnesses, so, so one thing it could do is it could just play a video, yeah. right? And definitely that, that is used. But it actually then talking about it in a trial, I don't know. That, that's a whole different thing. I'm okay. not sure if that would happen anytime soon. All right. And, um, Coming back to customers, what do you think are, if we're like a few years ahead, mm -hmm. what do you think are going to be the main benefits for customers when companies are really good with AI solutions for them? So personalization is going to be a big deal. Okay. And so every customer is going to be able to be served to their needs very quickly. Yeah. Um, also, the quality of customer service will be much better because you won't need to hire one person to serve whatever is a current request, you'll maybe one person can manage many AIs that help many customers. Yeah. And so I think that the quality of service will tremendously go up. Okay. And do you think that, um, it's one of my, my hypotheses that at a certain moment, we as humans will take more buying decisions based on an algorithm than based on our gut feeling? Do you agree with that? Or how do you so, look at that? I'm not sure if people will buy based on an algorithm, I guess, we're doing it. Or today what it'll on, feel on, like. On Amazon or Netflix. Mm -hmm. The will be recommended things. Yeah. And you're saying, I see, you're saying, as we recommend the things, to which extent are we critical to it or just kind of have a feeling that it right. tends to recommend the right things, so we just go with it? Right. Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> yeah, but because imagine that you have uh, Google Home or Amazon Echo mm -hmm. and you need a flight to, uh -huh. to Brussels. Um, it's a pretty rational product. You just look at, ask Google, look at my mm -hmm. calendar, book me the cheapest flight. Yes, uh -huh. cheapest flight, those dates. Those dates. Mm -hmm. Then at that moment, you don't care anymore which airline it is. It's basically the computer that makes that buying decision. That's true. Mm -hmm. And then my hypothesis is that in, in my field, marketing, they always said mm -hmm. perception is reality. 
I'm not sure if that will stay that way if computers take more decisions for us. I think reality will build uh, or perceived value will become less important than real value if we have more AI in decision making. So you know, that I didn't fully follow. So in marketing in the past we had mm -hmm. um, you know, advertising, communication, building a perception of a brand mm -hmm. and that influences buying behavior. Right? Oh, I see. Now mm -hmm. if a machine takes a decision based on information it finds online, it's more based mm -hmm. on reality than on perceived value. Oh, that's very interesting. You're saying the machine could make more rational decisions and could yeah. say, hey, I know this is best for you and now all we need is the brand of the machine. Because exactly. if the brand of the machine is good, then yeah. we'll trust the machine and we'll say, well, this is what the machine told me, yeah. so it's good. As right. opposed to, this is brand X, so it's good. Yeah. That's a real interesting observation. I haven't thought about that before. And very, agree? very do interesting. You, do you think it, it's, it could go in that direction? I think it could. I think where it remains a little tricky is you, you could buy something because of the reputation that it's a good thing. Yeah. But then a lot of buying also seems to be more fashion-based and you know, based on what other people think is mm -hmm. good. And you might buy, you know, I don't know, some brand because it gives you some kind of status effectively. Like, yeah. okay, that brand is associated with very, you know, people who love sports or something. Yeah. And so they're going to also wear it to the office because it's like a more athletic outfit for the office or something. True. And it might still be, if it's a different brand, you won't get the same perception from your peers. Yeah. And so, I, yeah, it seems like there is two parts to it. One is okay. things you just buy for using it and things you buy to make an impression on other people. Brand. Yeah, yeah it's true. It's true. Uh, maybe last question. Um, a lot of companies are going to watch this, uh, mm -hmm. especially in, in Belgium and Holland. A lot of companies are wondering the whole AI thing, what do we need to do? What mm -hmm. would be your recommendation for like a bank or a telco or a small business even? Mm -hmm. What should they do now with AI? So. Two, two things. One is that uh, data is key. Okay. So whatever you do, try to log as much data about it as possible so yeah. that it can be used by, to train AIs in the future. So make sure you, every, if you can, you know, if, if you can do support via online chat, your data might be logged in a nicer way than if you do it via phone calls. Of course, customer right. support yeah. matters too. If you do phone calls, then you might want to record them so the AI later can learn from the phone calls. Uh, whatever was discussed in there and so forth. Yeah. So I think da data is, is key. Okay. The other thing is to try to understand where in the near term AI can play a role if you have the data. And so um, a lot of it has to do with uh, pattern recognition for now. But pattern recognition doesn't mean image recognition per se. It could be speech recognition, it could be recognizing things in text and so forth. Okay. And so a big kind of a guideline some people have, have uh, put forward is something if a person can do something almost instantaneously. Like they look at something for a half second and they know the answer and that's what they did, mm -hmm. then that likely, if you have a lot of that, because it goes fast, you might have a lot of it too, um, you should be able to train a neural net to do what that person is doing. Okay. And then what you really want is probably in terms of deploying it, have a mix of person and AI initially. So have an interface where the AI makes suggestions to make the person more productive and more and more the suggestions become better and the person more and more gets phased out. Okay. And um, how should they organize? Do you, do you think it's possible for companies to do that by themselves? Or should they work with the big technology companies or with specialized companies? Um, so, you? Well, yeah. <laughs> so de definitely as, you know, as, as professors at a place like Berkeley AI Lab, we, we, we often get asked to consult for companies to see what, what is the right thing to do for them. And we'll spend like, you know, a couple hours a month talking about their problems and where the AI opportunities are. Um, but I think, in general, th that's one of the models, is to get expertise that way. Another model is that a lot of companies here in Silicon Valley essentially buy startups. So yeah. there's a bunch of young experts, typically, but it doesn't need to be young, but that's the, the typical case, because the people who are willing to you know, live out of their garage right. and build some kind of basic proof of concept, and then they're like, well, you know, we've lived in our garage long enough, this company wants to acquire us for a good amount of money, and we can help them build their AI and they go help them out for something, some specific needs. Um, the bigger companies can do a lot too. I think with the bigger companies, it's gonna be interesting to see some will likely do something more like consulting, mm -hmm. and maybe IBM or others fall in that category. Yeah. Others will provide things like as a service, and also important to look out for those things. So if you want image recognition, you could hire a PhD to build an image recognition system for you, or you could subscribe to a Google service where you can send in images and it sends back what's in the image yeah. to you. 
So, and there's a few startups that do this too. So I think there's different models. I think important is to, to really keep close track of what's happening because things can change very, very quickly. Okay. okay. And small businesses, can they do the same thing or is this something that's only for the big ones? Small businesses, I think logging data is key. Keeping yeah. track of decisions that you make repeatedly Same thing. Is, is, is key. If you make them fast and you log the data, it might be learnable. Um, I think for smaller businesses, there's a, lo a lot of tools that will become available. I mean, just basic things. Like Off-the-shelf stuff. Off-the-shelf things you can use that help you get things done. Yeah. Um, I expect there will be a lot of companies offering, offering specialized services, like a customer support web app or regular app that just has a lot of AI behind it that can yeah. you can then buy a license to or something and uh, use. Yeah, like you can do with those basic bots already, basically. To, Absolutely. To, yeah. mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate Steven. the time. Thanks.